Corey on this? Yes. Oh, wow. are. Oh, okay. So we call to order. It's up to you. I don't know. So is this meeting called to order? Yeah. Yep. Call the meeting. Okay. That's all good. Conservation Commission can start. Okay. Approval of minutes. Anyway. Oh, you, you didn't take them. Karen took them last time. Karen took them last time. Yeah, so she's not here. So, so we don't. We, we skipped that phase. Okay. It'll be, the, it'll be the fifth month out of six. <laughs> we were a little lax over the summer. <laughs> okay. Uh, adjustments to the agenda, and Max sent out something about, um, and I don't remember, we had talked about some sort of tree grant. Do you want to talk about that or put so, that on the agenda? Um, so. Uh, can I just quickly see the agenda? Oh, sure. So, uh, we're talking. You, you sent out an email. I, I sent an email to you. There is a grant that provides, I believe, eight to ten thousand dollars, depending on what we do. That involves planting trees in. I can be planting trees in Waldeboro or any other public-owned land, if need be. Mm -hmm. Uh, didn't know if that was something that this commission wanted to take a look at it, if there is some type of uh, area that we could see this being used. I don't see anything in particular. No, no, not unless... Uh, Lots of trees. I, yeah, I mean, if, if you're talking about tree growth, that's that's not, that's a 20-year project. And yeah, I think... Quarry Hill would be the place <coughs> to do it, but uh, there's trees there already. Yeah. I think that's more for like cities that don't have, you know, they have land, park land that doesn't have trees or something. Mm -hmm. We have so yeah, many trees. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think trees are a major <laughs> deficit here. I, they come on their own here. Yep. I know that Greenway that I keep yapping about. They got uh, a grant for that to make a riparian buffer along along the river. I think it's a similar grant that they, they that's. You know what helped that whole thing, but we don't need that right now. <laughs> so, okay. but thanks for. I'm going to print it out anyway. Because is this something that comes out annually? I believe so. Okay. Well, we might in the who, future. Who, who puts it out? Uh, Project Canopy. Kind of, oh, we type, we we as a committee have dealt with them before. And we know all of that. So we got one grant from them. And what six did you, years ago? What did you use it for? It was it paid for the um, management study of Quarry Hill. It was only twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, like and that, that was another. Thing man, or the management studies. So I mean, it paid. I mean, the, uh, they gave us a break on the on the uh, survey uh, so from Barry and now I forget her name. The uh, Janet. The, yeah, Janet. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they did it. But I mean, the uh, but I think I said last time we were talking. The it was easy to get the grant, and whoever had to administer was in hell. Oh, yeah. It, they they, they, they want to see spreadsheets saying how you spent this, hourly spreads, everything. Right. And, uh, Some justification. Luckily, I moved out of town, <laughs> so I left it for Patrick Wright. <laughs> yeah, we did, did a federal grant. The Land Trust did a federal grant that we're just finishing up for Ben's Island down on Dutch Neck Road. And um, we decided it's not worth doing federal grants. That was for 26000 We won't do another one for really? anything near that. It's got to be more to make it worth the paperwork. Yeah. They're just, it's crazy the amount of paperwork. Mm. Mm. Well, does it, anybody want me to send on this, what, what Max sent me? I'd like to see it, yeah. yeah we'll I'll send them out. I'll send it out today then. Okay. I, I don't know when the due date, in case somebody comes up with some idea what the due date is for that, that grant. Oh, I know one thing. I think there was workshops that were mandatory, and I think those were coming up in March. And you had to attend the workshops, you know, for either, either this tree grant thing. For this, yeah, and there uh, was there were several. With Project Canopy, they they let me just sit and listen to a, a webinar or whatever. Oh, maybe you call it was it. a webinar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we cold? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I think I think it was March was the the time that you had to attend the webinar. So, but if you, anybody thinks of anything, it doesn't. It would. I, I don't even know if it covers plantings or uh, just trees. Just for us, I, I really I need to read it. Yeah. More. All right. Yeah, I, I'm trying. I I'm still sitting here thinking. Okay, where could we need trees? No, not there. No, not there. It used to be that you know you had lovely trees along Main Street, but now with with power lines and that sort of thing, you can't can't do anything. Plus DOT regulation. Yeah, DOT and yeah, yeah. but 
maybe Max send it on to all of us and we can take some time to read it and maybe. Yeah, I'd, maybe I'd love to see Route 1 lined with, you know, nice trees, but that and just. And then they'd cut them all back. Yeah, that just doesn't, ugly. Ugly. It just doesn't so, work anymore. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, and I don't know whether some of them are specialty trees like planting, reforesting in, in the town forest or something mm -hmm. that would make it um, less desirable for them to want to cut what's already there, you know, because, and anyway, public input? No public? No public. I guess I'm sort of public because oh, I'm not officially on the committee. Oh, you're not? I'm representing Madame McValley Land Trust. I'm not a Waldeboro resident. Oh. So I don't vote on things. Oh, okay. But I come to as many meetings as I can. Okay. Do you have any input? <laughs> I do not, no. Okay. I guess I'd be public, right? Oh, uh, gosh, Sammy, you're not. No, you're an authority. No, you're, you're a, you're a uh, consulting senior advisor. advisor. Oh, okay. Okay. I say non voting member. <laughs> non voting consulting authority. We'll just keep adding on to the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they bring me more money, that's good. <laughs> Real title. Show me the money. Yeah. Non-paying, non-voting consultant member of the Conservation Commission. We'll just keep adding on. And then by the year's end, like by the time we're finished with your title, the meeting would be over. <laughs> yeah. The minutes are. Uh, pocket Park Tour. Is that this coming weekend? No, it was last weekend, and they canceled it. Oh. Okay. No, I mean, they, they, they canceled the tour. Okay. I mean, things went on. Well, you were yeah. there. You went to one of them. Yeah. Yeah. What? And I guess I should, I don't know what I was. What things went on? Cause I'm sorry. I the main great outdoor weekend at Riverview Park and at okay. River Tony Brook, Lashes. Actually. River Brook. Yeah. Yeah. Riverview is, is River. different. Well, I mean, so. Tony, oh, Tony okay. Lash has every, every toy you'd ever want to see. And every piece of equipment, and among other things, he made a, a ski jump, a sled jump for the kids. Oh, he did. He made an ice carousel, which involves cutting a, like a ten-yard diameter piece of ice out and then putting a motor in it. I saw a picture of that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he yeah. was doing everything. Huh. Anyway, but the, what does that have to do with the pocket parks, though? Well, we were gonna. Have, one of the things that was gonna be done also was to have a walk from uh, Pine Street up to up to Elm Street okay. through what might be our pocket park someday. But it was not enough interest and not enough snow. And not I think enough we beauty. should do it as this group so that we've all seen these. Yeah, potential I'd like parts. to know what the local. Okay, I'd we like do to it. do that. Yeah, yeah, we should do it because I mean I've been. I asked Max about this place up on Mill Street that the town thought about selling, which, no. which is also. No, and I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. okay. Yeah. Was, is there more than just no? Uh, yeah, but I can explain it. Okay. okay. Just oh a boy. Bit. Yeah, maybe after our next meeting or something, yeah, we yeah. could do a I mean, little I, tour. Every time I drive through there, I'm looking, I, you know, I look down as I come across uh, on old Route 1. The distance between there and the river park, river view, river park, or whatever That's it is. That's river park. Uh, it's, it's just so, so short, but uh, Jan Minzy says there are two neighbors who, who would not like the idea. Yeah, yep. uh, the one, one immediately next to river park put up a no trespassing sign okay. a few yeah, years I mean, ago. Right she did not want find people. Some way to Where, which is River Park? Um, River Park is the one behind the um, hardware Bear Hill Hardware. Oh, okay, yeah. that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's but the neighbor to the, this side, you know, as to you're the looking, left of as it. As you're looking from the street to the left? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so between the park and, and Jan Minzies. Right, she doesn't seem to be too interested in having a trail across there. I mean, could you, I mean, is it is it a lot crosser or is it, you know, like, I don't want to trail because, and then we can say, well, because one of the We old haven't old. truthfully talked to her about it. We just know she's not particularly friendly to people being on her property. Okay. Um, so, you know, it might be something where Jan would be the person to approach her, but I would get all the other people lined up in that area first. Yeah. Um, but, you know, even if people have to walk on the street to get to some of these parks. It's not, I mean, it's just great having the network of parks, yeah, okay. so. So let's plan a walk up into these parks. I mean, it's, you know, just from here to there. Yeah. And uh, let's plan a walk on our next meeting, yeah. Okay. On the ne next meeting, you wanna do that? Yeah, why not, afterwards. I, yeah, so let me see March. if I'm gonna be, a, be around, let me well, see. You should be here, so we should wait for another yeah. month if you're not. Let's see, I'm trying to get to Iowa. <laughs> Tell me, Tom. March, no. <laughs> and you keep taking that wrong turn at Albuquerque. Well, it's always, yeah. <laughs> and so it would be March. Uh, 20th. 20th. Pocket 
Status of AD gray trail for public access. Uh, well, you, didn't you want me to discuss the uh, yeah. little Let's properties? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, like, th it's not like we're moving forward with that just yet. We we have to see it all, but mainly the land that would be considered is the more landlocked plots of land. Like I can just. This is not the right map. Yeah, it probably doesn't. It's that's that's not the right map for eighty, Greg. Yeah, no, it, no for anything, for anything but like, but like, say, the town owned, I don't know, like this piece that's not, I don't know, just a piece that really isn't connected to the road or the water or anything, and it's just like a a, a bigger plot of land that's just not accessible by an actual road. Mm -hmm. That would be something considered, but like Elm Street, Mill Street, those aren't really high priority type ones to, con to consider selling. But we're not even, like, the selling isn't even like a, a near. It wouldn't, in a word, it's not, they're not talking about selling it immediately. Right. We're not, like, it's not like we're starting to put up the signs or anything. Like, oh, the Elm, Elm Street on. That's what, Elm at Jefferson. That that's the old that water. The one where this, we're going to have the park. Totally different map. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. we want to have the park. That wouldn't be. That wouldn't be sold. But it's. I didn't, it's. That wouldn't be sold. Just over that in the Elm Street one, the one that the town owns. Um, that cross we well, want to okay, have. Okay, I just want to make sure that we're thinking of the same yeah. parcel. If you go yeah. down Jefferson to the street just before the river. Yep. That little corner. That little there, corner. Where just before the first little bridge. Just before the first little bridge. Right, where there's the waterworks. Where the, the waterworks is, that yeah. wouldn't be sold. That won't be, okay. That, that, that won't ever be, be sold, or just not for sale now. That could be a cute little park. Yeah, no, that that's something the town wouldn't sell. Yeah, but I mean, there's only, like, there's not really any park in there. I mean, there maybe yeah, two not. spots. Dale was ready to put a, a picnic table there. Really? Yeah, it's actually, it was gotten by the Conservation Commission around five years ago. They couldn't, it needs to be stunk from the ground, so he couldn't put an introduction in. This was, a, this was a good table, all metal. Oh, okay. And it's been sitting up in the garage. So does, trading it. so does the bridge adjoin that piece of property? That little bridge? I mean, is mm, it? No. The bridge is on Mill Street, you mean? Yeah, actually, uh, on, on Mill Street, it's not only... You haven't gone to the bridge yet, but this little park is right where the river has just come down the hill and is now going this way, and there's another stream that comes down through a culvert. I guess we'll have to just look at. Yeah, we'll have yeah, to walk. We'll get it better after the pocket park tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we should do the pocket park tour at nine and our meeting after that, so okay. we all yeah. know what we're talking about instead That's of doing it the idea. other way around. Sounds good. I like yeah. That. Yeah, I've been kind of confused, and we, and we should put get a map and make X's on the map so that we all if are talking about the same location. If you want to come in and show me where they all are, I can create a map. Of what? Of what? all the pocket parks. I, I can only think of two, but I mean, we're, we're coming up with others. I mean. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's other places like on Elm Street where the waterfall is. I think the town owns that little piece of land. So um, it would be yeah, nice there's to a just house there that the on the other side of the road. Right. There's, yeah, there's a house, uh, 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 the property is across the, the street from the river, or? No, I think it's right on the river that okay. I'm pretty sure the town owns. Okay, and that, um, I think that's the one that Julie was talking about, that there's a house there that they thought about renovating into some sort of a town facility or mm -hmm. something. They yeah. own the house, too, or? The yeah, the, the house isn't house. that close to it. That would be interesting to see because we really. Uh, that's what I thought. I mean, yeah. you know, I may be getting. Well, that. maybe. Maybe we just need to figure out where all the pieces of property the town owns okay. in town are. Yeah. Uh, actually, we know that. that I don't, don't give me. We we had that information, uh, and Karen has a, they 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 printed out a copy of every piece of the town tax map that had town property because we were the original job of this committee was to log the town, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and there's like you know. The well, 
spots here. So, so we have a map. At one time, they printed out every piece of town property. Mm -hmm. The so ones that were bigger than like a tenth of an acre or three acres were all the uh, the landfill, the town garage, yeah. the, the water tower. So do they still have that? The max we can do it. I mean, I, can't, yeah. I, I, find, I get my copies of so Karen, it's just, it's just, I mean, there is a copy of yeah. every piece of property that's on the town map. Well, the town well, town well, I can also that just, got, that would that be nice to have a good clear copy. Yeah, of. I can just go to Daryl after this and ask him to mark up oh, yeah, one of the urban area maps that shows where they all are. Yeah. That might be the easiest. I mean, if, if you fight your way through this, uh, what, what they gave us, I mean, I can get, I can get it for it from Karen. And actually, uh, Scott went to Google Maps and looked at each place uh -huh. to see if there was any timber on them, and he said, no, nah, yeah. not yet, not for a while. Because I think anything that's on the river would, you know, sh you can put have for a pocket park and yeah. then. Yeah, those tenth of an acre spots, which are pretty much useless for anything else, would yeah. be great they're pocket nice. parks. Yeah, if people know that they're there so yeah. that they use them. I mean, right now, probably nobody knows where they are. Yeah, well, that's something that could be yeah. on the town Facebook page, web page, and then publicized through places like the Farmer's Market and, yeah. and Waldboro Day and yeah. just have well, maps. Yeah, I mean, it could be that. I don't know how much vandalism or whatever that would attract. It could be more something just so that the people that live in town, which are the logical people to use it, so yeah. they know where they are. Well, it depends on what's there to vandalize, too. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're talking about... Um, you know, like just a couple of big boulders for people to sit on mm -hmm. and a nice shade tree and a bunch of flowers around yeah. there groomed where people can just stop and rest in the shade when mm -hmm. they're walking around. Yeah. Not going to see much vandalism yeah. there. Mm -hmm. But then if you start thinking, oh, well, it's not a pocket park unless it has a picnic table. Well, you know, then you got a trash bin, you're inviting yeah. people to sit there and eat or smoke yeah. or whatever. and at that point, you know, it's almost got to be a car, you know, there's almost got to be parking, yeah. so that's a whole different story. Yeah. It would be really cool if the town did something where they had like a tour of the, like, you know, a published tour of historic buildings with some information and the pocket park thing mm -hmm. was built into that, so it yeah. was like a walking tour of Waldeboro. A mm -hmm. video walking tour, yeah. Yeah, and so... Oh, a video one or a... Mm -hmm. uh, what, you you said a video one? Yeah, you, could do, you, could, do a slide, you could do a slideshow, but you could also do a narrated video or something yeah, like that. Yeah, or it could just be a piece of paper that people could take. and Or you know. all three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it'll happen, but it'd be kind of cool. Start, I mean, Walt has such small beautiful with the paper buildings. They had some wonderful history. Yeah. Well, maybe we could collaborate with the Historical Society. Oh, that's a good know? idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm writing it. Yeah, because they've got the Historical Society building, they've got the town pound there, the animal pound, and then they would know all the historic buildings. They could put something together, and then we could just push some pocket park stuff into it. You know, you know and sometimes there's grant money, you know, this tree thing. I mean, I have to read it, but sometimes to plant a special tree, you know, to, to do the planning of it and plan. Yeah, I don't know. I have to read that grant. I'm sorry. I didn't read the whole thing. It looks That's interesting. Fine. Yeah, there might be. Right. A, I just well, the grant might include some like specimen ornaments. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking yeah. is you know specimen plants and stuff. Yeah, along along the river with these pocket parks and stuff. Right. Yeah, and they might not even all be town owned. It might be stuff like Cider Hill where the owners just encourage public use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, so now eighty gray. Hmm? So now eighty gray. Okay. Uh, yeah. hmm? No, I don't know. So if you, I think the ball was in your court after this, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I have called the neighbors and people who have the trail going through their property. They all seem fine with it as long as people are respectful of the property. Which property is this? Uh, so. Near 80 Gray, there is the trail that goes around yeah. and is now marked, apparently, correct? It's totally marked, and I'm not sure who did it, but uh, I think it was the town. Yeah. And other than the fact that they used uh, red dots, which they shouldn't use on trees, I mean, it was, it, no, it's great. Wonderfully laid out, it's a great trail, it crosses the brook two or three times. Maybe we should have our pocket park tour also include that. 
I guess. Do it. That's, it's a little bit longer. I mean, Karen and I did it about two months, a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. How long is it? Uh, it's only about 45 minutes. Oh. And it, no, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice trail. It's on my to-do list at work to walk that, but it's been on my to-do list for months and months, and I haven't done it. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's so verbally, they've said. said I've called them. Okay. Do we? Do we need to have something, you know, just in writing saying it's okay so that we can, I don't know, clear, maintain, whatever the trail? I mean, I don't know how this works. In this case, I would say no because, yeah. I mean, that, that trail's been there and, and it's all marked saying, you know, private property, respect the owners. So that okay. I think everybody's aware of it. So okay. So there's just a getting some the history of it. Yeah, Maine has a real history of just handshake agreements on trails. Okay. Like if you look at George's Riverland Trust in Rockland, uh -huh. they have like something like 30 miles of trails that are all handshake agreements. Really? Nothing in writing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. And we have a few ourselves. More kind of, sort of like the European model where you can go on anybody's yeah. land as long as you are respectful of their land. Yeah. Hmm. It's a little different because there actually is an agreement. There's no legal right, whereas in Europe, Europe there's maybe a legal is, right yeah. to go on anybody's I remember land, there were some people that were can't, drove up our, we had a long, long driveway, drove up, got out all their picnic stuff by our pond down below. I could see, you know, making themselves quite at home. And I was, I was kind of like, how dare they, you know? And I went down there, and then I saw that their license plates were, were, were from Quebec, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a whole different, you know, as long as you're respectful. So, okay, so that's, um, that's another spot, huh? Good. Uh, no, no, so I think in this, in this case, now that, now that Matt's got the, got the details down, this, this, this thing's fine to go. I just want to publicize it. You know, I mean, we don't have to do any more work on this. Just tell people about it. Uh -huh. and go is out and try it. Go out and try it. It's dog friendly. Not for your dog. It's dog friendly. <laughs> so, I mean, is this something that would be, you know, you just said making it public. I mean, do they not want to make it public? No, I mean, just publicizing. I'm sorry, publicizing it. Yeah. Pub Cause that's what I mean, publicize it. I mean, how would the owners feel about everybody knowing about it? Or is I it... I mean, I guess they just, it's okay for people to I, use it. I asked yeah. them if it's fine if the general public was allowed on, and they said fine. Hmm. Okay. Um, any more ideas on uh, recreation and scenic plan for Quarry Hill? No, I haven't. In conjunction with Lincoln. Oh, let's see, why did I put that down there? Because oh, we, we, we wanted to speak to the, uh, the, trail. to the hunters and the snowmobiles about what they'd like to see there. Yeah. And there's parts of it that I'm, I've never seen that may be of interest, interest to people. When we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, the Project Canopy Grants, I've had this dream for a long time of planting deer-friendly vegetation up there just for the hunters in town. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they do them to bring in the deer. I mean, you would probably not like that idea at well, a land trust. You know. Uh, like you know, my, my, my dream is to harvest a bunch of trees, get some money, and then, then plant and stuff that deer like. Oh, it'll come into blackberries and raspberries and mm -hmm. aspen and stuff deer like anyway if you cut a bunch of trees. It just okay. it becomes good deer habitat on its own. You don't need to do anything. That's true. <laughs> it, you know, it takes a few years. But if you plant something, the deer are just going to eat it and kill it. Yeah, the stuff that comes back naturally is adapted yeah. to that kind of stuff happening. I mean, what about these, you know, these, these hunting uh, resorts where they, you know, they, they actually plant things that deer like? Yeah, I don't know what they're planting. Okay. Um, you know, maybe okay. some crops. You know, there are some grain crops probably. I, I doubt it's trees. Probably. Yeah. It would take some research, I don't know. But I mean, you could already do that in the fields up there. You could take an acre or two out of the Spears lease and put something into there. Um, anytime you concentrate deer, you're asking for trouble with health problems. Um, deer health or our health? Deer health. <laughs> well, and ours yeah. too with the ticks. <laughs> Yeah, because like for example, chronic wasting disease, which is spread throughout most of the country now, I don't think it's here yet. Um, it's spread through deer feces and urine, and so anytime you concentrate deer, they're more likely to 
consume you know something that's on that ground and they're more likely to pick up chronic wasting disease so that's just one example hmm. that's scrapey it's it may have it may have come from scrapey it's like um mad cow disease yeah I know in, in uh, yeah. one of those misfolded sheep, protein things sheep yeah. Blocks yeah. The it's a protein in the brain kind of thing it eats away at the brain yeah, and it's probably contagious to humans <gasps> when they eat the deer. In the states where they know they have it, or at least where they admit they have it, they have hunters submit the brains to the state for testing, and they tell them, you know, be extremely careful not to mix, you know, not to touch the head or the brains, and then touch the meat because it could be transmitted and it's how about it's North Carolina I just had some deer I don't meat. know <laughs> I don't no, know I, you know I've never eaten any deer meat but a friend got a deer got one here and one in North Carolina he went to and so I made up made up some chili and I'm like boy this is it was really good yeah. I mean it was I just can't eat regular meat anymore I don't know when yeah, so thanks for telling me about that. Well, no, it's, I won't you know, <laughs> no, it's probably fine. Where they have it, you know, they tell the hunters to be careful. And, though, I don't know, I did talk to one ranger who said it was in Maine and they're keeping it quiet. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. That's the only place that I've ever heard of it being here. But when I lived in Colorado, it was really widespread. And I know it's spread as far as Wisconsin. Mm. And it typically gets spread from um, animal farms, like, you know, where they bring deer in yeah, and yeah. you can go out and hunt them. That's how it's spreading around the country mostly. There's so much stuff. Anyway. So, and then uh, we're, s sorry, I don't know if we're still talking about. We're done. Okay. Uh, and then for Quarry Hill, I was, I, I've been talking about the uh, town white trail idea for a while. Uh, don't know how much money could really go into the old trail thing, but the grant that I'm talking, that I've been planning on using, could be used to for a Quarry Hill uh, recreation plan, if that is desired, like setting up a parking lot or having it as this. Well, whatever was planned for this. Mm -hmm. Max, let's you and I sit down with a map at some point with Quarry Hill because we also have a piece of land just to the south of there that we own mm -hmm. and there's, it's only separated by one lot from Quarry Hill and I would love to see a trail system that went from the piece of land we own, which we're going to put a trail system on this year, up through Quarry Hill. You know, a nice big trail system. Mm -hmm. um, so Do the Mollies have any system in there in place before? Um, they had their own small trail system, and we've actually cleared all the way around the boundaries, and we're going to turn that into a trail in this year, in 2018. So there's just Carl Waterman is the only property in between. And if we could get permission to go across that or get an easement on it or something, we could have a really nice, you know, big, long system there. Did you ever see down where the Boy Scouts used to camp? Mm-mm. -mm. And I, 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 on Quarry Hill? Yeah, well, all I've done is look at the map. It doesn't look like there's any water coming through there unless it's a tiny stream. Mm -hmm. But they used to do it on a, like a yearly basis. And that's is, up, is it up in the fields? Uh, let's see, as you're, as you're cresting the hill and all the blueberry fields are off to your left, mm -hmm. I think if you go straight down through the cornfield and keep on going, it's down sort of down this way, okay. heading maybe toward the Moley's property. Hmm. It seems to me that the uh, between the Moley's between the road that goes up Quarry Hill and anything to the south mm -hmm. is the biggest junk field you've ever seen. Yeah, up junk to field a, being? Up to and including appliances. Oh, lovely. Somebody, it, it was used as a de facto dump. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen this that. This is near Quarry Hill? Yeah, it's right, it's right off, 10 yards off the road as you're going up the hill. Hmm. Jesus. Hmm. So but that, that would be good if we could get, get a grant to do something up there. You know, I, I think I'd like to get the advice from the snowmobilers and anybody else who wants to speak up. The hunters, the. Uh, I wonder, uh, that's that's still an active dump site, or? I don't think so. Oh. No, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's not. It's just no one's cleaned it up. No one's cleaned it up. It's, it's, so it's probably it's, it's probably wildlife habitat now. It probably is. It's, it's like probably what? Wildlife habitat right now. 
Is it like so old metal stuff, or is it like yeah, plastic it bag? Yeah, I, I, I only had to climb through it once or twice. No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's things you throw away, like, like appliances. And mm -hmm. Like big things that you, they yeah. charge you to throw away at the dump. Yeah. Yeah, we had that problem in Michigan, too. There was yeah, this is a vague remember, remembrance, but it seems to me that the hillside coming down from the road was just all trash. Yeah, yeah we had a... Hmm. Trash, not trash. Uh, our, our, things. our local town dump started charging people two bucks per fridge or stove mm -hmm. or washer or dryer. Suddenly, bingo on a little dirt road near our... Near where we lived, there was like every night two or three new things because yeah. people just didn't want to spend two bucks yeah. to throw out there. Yeah. It's like yeah, people on my property in Bremen, people threw um, a bunch of lawn fluorescent tubes right next to a stream. Oh, boy. So Jesus. there's like all that mercury. The state came out and cleaned it up, but it's like, you know, they charge a buck to, depo to dispose of them at the dump, and so people threw it there instead. Yeah. Like... Crazy. Where so it ended up costing them more in tax dollars to get it cleaned up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you in favor of paper bag? What? I'm sorry. What? Are what? you in favor of the paper bag system for Waldoboro? For, for for what? It means if you're going to take your dump to trash the dump, you got to buy a bag first. Oh, the paper bag. Yeah, paper thinking. bag. Paper bag. We defeated it in a vote, but. Uh, uh, oh. Now. What? Like you were saying, the paper bag thing. I was thinking uh, like the plastic bag ban that's been going on yeah. in the state yeah, that's lately. What I didn't know if that's what you were talking yeah, about. I would, yeah, yeah. This, this was Bob bag. Butler's thing, and then we defeated it. You know, and we as a town. Well, I, the way I understand it, the intent of of having people pay a fee to throw things into the landfill hopper. The intent is to encourage people to not throw as much there and recycle yeah. more. Mm -hmm. I, I honest, I think it's a great idea, but I honestly don't think right, it would work. Right, because people who are conscientious enough to to yeah. not dump, you know, not dump their stuff on the side of the road are going to be recycling, yeah. you know, and using the compost things. And yeah, well, it, 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 there were systems like that that were tried in Michigan, and they ended up with more road debris. Yeah. Because again, people don't, they don't want to, oh, you're going to charge me what, 25 cents? Oh, well, I'll just throw it on the side of the road then, rather than spend the quarter. It's the principle of the thing. I've lived in three towns where they had pay for, you know, pay to throw away, and it worked really well. So yeah, you do get some of that on the side of the yeah. road, but I think it really does up recycling. And what, if I look what's at What's the demographics though? Were they near, um, not to be... You know, are they near universities? Were they a little more upscale one of them or was, more two well of them educated? Were, one was not. Well, it, they weren't. They weren't the same demographic as Waldoboro. Yeah. Do we know what our recycling rate is now? Hmm? Do we know what our recycling rate? I is? don't. I don't. Because that would certainly be worthwhile. I mean, you know, like if if the if our recycling rate is already at a level that's comparable to the pay for throw places, then kind of, again, you know, like, why do it? Yeah. I mean, I how much more? I mean, it, it seems to me, we, as I recall, we have a pretty good recycling rate. I think so. Yeah. I, I and they, they have a full-time guy looking in your car for no reason yeah. whatsoever to make sure you have recycling. Because the idea is if you can walk up there with only garbage, only trash bags, they're going to charge you something. Right. Yeah. So they just look in your car. Hey, what you got? Yeah. And and, and the nice thing about that is, they take it easy on 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 people that are just bringing in, you know, a couple of bags, you know, like in in the back of their car. You know, they're not charging per bag. You know, I mean, like I I go in there with with my truck and I'll have because I only go once every month or six weeks. You know, I'll have four or five, six bins and bags of recycling and three or four trash bags, you know. But still, if I go in there for some reason with just trash bags, the guy says, just household? Yeah, he says, we'll catch you on the recycling next time. You know, and that's, that I think fits the demographic mm -hmm. around here and the attitude around mm -hmm. here. So, I don't know, just my two cents. Hmm. So, 
to get back on the Quarry Hill, so Max, um, you mentioned something about grant to do a So the Recreation Trail Program grant, which is the one that I was going to use for this uh, the big town-wide trail thing, uh, the grant can be used for, say, a parking lot at oh. Quarry Hill, seeing as that would be uh, establishing a recreation sort of necessity. So that's why I, you know, I don't know what how much it would cost for the town trail. It might cost the amount for the grant. It might cost nothing if it's already an established and maintained trail already. Uh, but the two things that sound like were needed for this was parking for the trail to work was parking mm -hmm. and access points so quarry hill for example and then uh tony lash mentioned a uh, a uh, bridge needed at reap road i believe i'll have to check my notes again but it was it was something sort of minor in oh, northern Wallaby. i think i know where he's talking about yeah so this is something you're, you're looking into <coughs> writing this grant or what? Yes, this grant is something I would like. This is a grant what that's you, due. Well, this is a grant that's due, I believe, in September. And I want to try and get Waldeboro to have one for this year. Okay. And so. So you. And I, well, so. I think it's a 30,000 max grant. Mm -hmm. And then the town would have to pay a 20% match, I believe. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I have it in my office. Actually, do you want me to quickly grab it? That would be great. I'd like, I'd like to see that. And this yeah. is a main grant, not a federal. So okay. save you on the paperwork. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, parking is always. We don't like parking lots, but they are necessary. <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to have one right at the top of the hill at Quarry Hill. Uh -huh. A number of years ago, and we had taken out too much else to do. But they were going to carve out a little three or four uh -huh. place parking up there. Because I wanted people to be drive right up there and ski. Right. And right. plow the road. And uh, it just never got done. I think maybe that should be something we'll ask about in our budget this year or mm -hmm. get it into the grant. Well, that might even be like, you know, to to focus and, and that be our goal. That would be our project. I, have, I feel like I have my back to you all the time. Oh, sorry. sorry if I only have one copy. Let me, just back quick, oh, wait. <laughs> Let me just quickly see. Eligibility and funding applications. Let me see. And uh, they have two separate uh, funding things, one for motorized and one for non-motorized. Um, do, 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 do. And what's, what's Would it you called consider again? having this trail motorized? It's called Main what? It is the Main Recreational Trails Program. Now there's two different. Yeah, but I mean, is it, 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 when you think of this cross town trail, do you think of, of, of non motorized? You think of ATV access? And you're looking into the non motorized. Okay, so it's non vehicle. Non vehicle. Non vehicle. Okay. Uh, levels. Non mechanized, so no mountain bikes or whatever either, or. Uh, no, no mountain bikes. Uh, let's see, where is it? I wonder if I had that in a grant thingy that I was looking at. Yeah, regular grants not to exceed $35,000. Motorized bridge projects not to exceed $100,000. Uh, acquisition projects not to exceed $35,000. Uh, match requirements. Um, RTP grant is a reimbursement grant, meaning the applicant must pay the project cost in full. Applicants must provide at least 20% match, match for development and safety, environmental education grants, and at least 50% for acquisition. 
50 percent for acquisition yep. is that what you said yeah so if this was the pine street landing case then uh we would have to pay at the most seventeen and a half thousand dollars what does it have to match if you're just putting a parking lot in uh i believe it would be 20 percent because it's development okay <coughs> This is all stuff I can double check with, uh, with the um, the main department of agriculture and conservation forestry. And then match can come from any source other than cash. It can come from volunteer and labor and equipment. It can come from, and the, the labor is based on the uh, minimum wage. So if we were to have say just one person work one hour as a volunteer, I'll just leave that there if anyone wants to take a peek. Then that would be $10 that would go towards our match. You say it can't be cash? Or it can be It, it, it can be cash. Cash. Okay. cash is an option. Volunteering is an option. Equipment is an option. And I think they have a little uh, chart that says, like, you know, if someone was to give a chainsaw for an hour, it would be $35 an hour. That would be our contribution or something like that. So say you buy something and it's $50,000 um, and you can get up to 35 for the for acquisition, grant. Yes. For acquisition, Let's just say it's $35,000. You can get up to 35 for the grant, but you have to have match. So, mm -hmm. so you that put your volunteer hours into it and you match you know, 20 percent of it, which is 7,000 in volunteer hours, you can still get the 35,000? Yes. Okay. That's a lot of volunteer. Ten bucks mm -hmm. an hour. I was just using an example. Okay. This is online, so we can print it out, right? Uh, yes, I can also so just that. I can copy that and send it out to everyone too. Now is okay. is That'd this one of the grants yeah. that LePage is making really difficult to get? Um, like the person in charge hasn't indicated that the grants charge changing at all, and I don't believe LePage has made it difficult. Okay, because I mean, there's some like the um, MNRCP main. There, there's one program that we used to get money from that he has made it almost impossible to get money from. So everybody's just waiting until he's out of there before we apply for that grant again. Uh, it's Maine Natural Resource Conservation Program, that's what it is. Then this would not be it. Hmm. Because this should, like, I don't recall ever seeing those exact Yeah, no, programs. this is not it. I just wondered if this was in the same situation. I don't believe so. Because, because this is recreation. This, that's yeah. recreation. Yeah, and the page isn't anti-recreation, is he? But he's anti-acquisition, and that well, covers acquisition. Yeah, so anti-acquisition for, you know, hoity-toity stuff like conservation, preservation, environmental well, good, you know, value and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But hey, you know, yeah, you want, but you yeah, want with your recreation. So the acquisition one might be is a different topic, but uh, we would focus on the development one, which yeah. I think would be all s would be fine. Yeah, uh, thirty-five thousand. At most for projects, so that would be about a 20% of that, a $42,000 project. 35,000 from this, and then 20% from us. Hmm. So that's what uh, I was going to use for the townwide trail. However, if I don't think I can, if the project would need say as much for having the trail being a year-round thing, and if it's a simple matter of just having someone walk through the trail and marking it, then this is still a grant that I think all will benefit from if they just apply it, and what it would be used for, I think Quarry Hill would be a very mm -hmm. good space to just have it, because start, yeah. cause trail wise, it's a good access point, and uh, could use the parking. And then, uh, m without the trail, it's 
still this well-known piece in Baltimore that could use parking and mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the funds. What do you need from us to help you? Uh, just the idea that just you guys saying, yeah, that could work, and if you do decide to have this Quarry Hill Recreation Plan, just say what would be put into it so that if an, an optimal place for sit, the parking. Mm -hmm. And if I was to apply for this and for it to go towards Quarry Hill, just um, help to make sure the town would have the funds or there would be the volunteers to just mm -hmm. get our matching contributions. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of all this. I think, uh, I think we, should, we should have a meeting with Daigle and say, what is your estimate for doing this or parking a lot or extending right. extending the road to the cornfield? Yeah, here's here's what we can do. Here's yeah. some of the things that we're thinking that we'd like mm -hmm. to do. And here's mm -hmm. how right. they two, the two meet up through this grant. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, right. I didn't find out, I didn't even ask uh, how much money we have in the Blueberry account. Uh, it might very well be that there's 6000 bucks there. Uh, oh, did you get to find I think out? this is, I got, I got this from Karen. Uh, this is the two se that was, 2000. Yeah, 2017. This is yeah, last, last year's. Year. Yeah. But I didn't get but no, this I, year. I, uh, no. I didn't how ask. do we get that? Ask Eileen. Uh, she, ask she frequently doesn't want to tell me. Or she, what? <laughs> she finds her. No, she, she <laughs> I don't know. But you know, I, I'm not sure. You know, that in theory, the blueberry fields, that when I was in business, the money would go into one particular budget line and be sitting there. I'm not sure where that money is sitting. Who? No, I just I just had them cut me a check for this. this um, um, yeah. My, my, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. My mind is like, yes. It's, it's early. But anyway, uh, I'll <laughs> and, ask And it came from can. somebody else uh, it, next so to the, Julie's she, she's office. She's a deputy. She's a deputy. Uh, Eileen actually sits out in the main office. Okay, but who is the person director. actually? I, I, I've met her. I don't me think she's the assistant finance director. Oh, she is? Yeah. Oh, was her, what was her name? I don't know. I, I talked to her. But anyway, <laughs> I'll ask Eileen if she'll tell me. I mean, if, if we had a good blueberry year. They might be looking at four thousand, five thousand bucks, which but which this would be a nice thing to spend it on. Blueberry proceeds. Well, depending on how your lease is set up, if it's a percentage of proceeds, the price in blueberries has fallen drastically. Yeah. Um, if it's as per um, per quart or per per pound, I guess you'll be okay. But at the land trust, we have two properties which are blueberry land, and we went from per pound, or from, um, what did we go from? We're now a percentage, or instead of a per pound price, we're a percentage of the crop price, mm. which means that our profits fell drastically. Well, how, how much you know, Like maybe a third? Okay, that's, well, that's, that's still something. Well, does oh, this go from still something, something you know, Clary Hill is what? Does this roll over from year to year? In other words, in if there were 2,500 2, from last year and we only used 500, do we still have In 2, my 000? opinion, yes. In my opinion, that is not the general fund that doesn't go away. All the other parts of the budget should go away. The Oh, the signage, paint. See, it didn't say that any, well, I don't know whether any of this was. If it was the line where she says it was part of the uh, parks and cemeteries and this and that budget line, which it was, that goes away. But just the blueberry funds should stay there forever. But, uh, I guess I, I guess we need to sit down and talk to her about how this works and what we have. Well, that's not, I mean, you can talk to talk to somebody. I mean, she, she, Karen got into this late, and, and she uh, she just knows that we were talking about going actually trying to get a conservation commission piece of the budget. And uh, after talking to Daigle and some other people, he just folded into his budget along with the garden club and a bunch of other things. Yeah. And Karen maintains it was like two or three thousand dollars. I mean, I've I've never seen that line item number. I mean. Yeah, we talked a little bit with Julie about this six or eight months ago or something. I think it was shortly after she got here. Yeah. And she was talking about, um, and who was the, the, the guy who was on the commission? It was the budget hawk. Oh, 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 oh yeah, Higgins. Well, that was Higgins. Higgins. Higgins, yeah. And, and he was saying that the whole thing was, you know, w there, were, there were all sorts of budgets that, that things for, for the Conservation Commission and, and yeah. 
um, the garden club and stuff could be drawn from because they could fall under so many different categories. Yeah, as, as long as it's working. I mean, I, I, I was a little apprehensive because we went into this year with no lines in the budget. I mean, there's no Conservation Commission line in the budget. It's just, we'll make sure everything works out for you kind of thing. And I yeah, think I, the fact that I trust Daniel so much uh, and the town uh, didn't really bother me that much. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure things will that makes it hard you well, and things are going to be uh, be done as, as to most benefit of the town, mm -hmm. yeah. not anybody's ego. Well, he's mm -hmm. got a he's got a, a, a parks budget. He's parks, parks and cemeteries. Par parks and parks and cemeteries maintenance budget. Yeah. So, like so the kinds we, of we things got, that we we're talking about that here money for with the pocket parks and stuff, whatever money we would need to spend would come out of that. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else has, like you say, the blueberry. Budget. The, the, the blueberry budget fund. should be totally separate from the town budget. I keep on yeah. believing this. Uh, somebody has to prove this untrue. Because yeah. but I mean, there, there are very there are various line items under different departmental budgets yeah. that various things that we would do would come out of. Yeah. So you're saying that the blueberry money is just for conservation? Just for the conservation commission. Yes. Yes. Only for use on Quarry Hill? Or no, 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 no. Okay. Anywhere in town. We okay. got. They added that as a rider. Uh, because uh, they were nice about it. The only, the only thing that I screwed up in the negotiation is there's this money, and we, in theory, have to leave 3000 of it for Daigle in case he needs it. For the and I'm not sure if he spends 3000 to get 3000 the next year. But that was a bad piece. I mean, I was, I was so happy to get, A, permanent money, and spend it all over town, and we actually talked Daigle off. He wanted 2500 and we talked him up to 3000 and, and when did this happen? Has this been over several years? We've it's been about a year and a half. Oh, that, okay, so it's a new thing. Yeah, I mean, it's in the, it's, it, it, if you go to the town website, you'll see the conditions. And I believe, you know, if you go to from four, uh, ordinances and, and this, uh, there's a page so in there that. giving it. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we did a good job just negotiating because we didn't make, never made it clear what, how Daigle would get paid out of this. But I'd like to find out first how much money we have. And Maybe we should go together okay. and yeah. do that. Yeah. I mean, because you, left. Eileen laughs at me. And well, you, I'm, I'm just joking, but uh, you know, usually in, in this case, I send Karen in, but, uh, <laughs> so she can be nice, nice. But if you want to, want to ask, that's fine. I mean, I'll, I mean, if she's uh, sitting there in front of the way, we can at least tickle her and say, "Can you get the number for us?" Yeah, maybe not. not uh, yeah, I've got my company at home, but I, I, yeah, it'd, it'd be nice to know so that you could, you know, do a little something at the different pocket parks, kind of. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if we were going to get grants, I mean, that money yeah, could be... Yeah, and the grant, the, yeah. The, the match part of the grant. Yeah, that's uh, a good point. Yeah. And I, uh, I mean, in terms of asking for a budget, uh, we kind of got slightly detailed last year, like you saw there, and then uh, that was just our estimate, and we can put that in again. But, I mean, it all just got dissipated. It all got folded into the town budget, and things happened. I, I mean, I'm sure you didn't... I'm sure Daigle did good things for the Garden Club. Um, he's helped, yeah. I mean, it, he, he kind of, it, it took him a while to kind of get used to the idea that there actually was a garden club still in existence and that we were working on stuff. Well, you were and phased and out for a while and you all died. Well, not I all. I, I, you didn't die. There. I joined in response to the fact that Karen, when she had the beautification thing that Scott mm. yeah. had proposed, asked me, like, a year ago, almost exactly a year ago now. Hey, does the Garden Club still exist? And I knew it did because there were several members of the Garden Club were customers of mine for plants. You know, I guess they were just getting too old to, to do out do the gardening. That's well, yes. and that was part of the problem, and also kind of the way they were their approach to projects. It was like each individual project they had, they had done, like each median was a like an assignment, like you, you yeah. one person would own it instead of attacking each project as a group, however many people you could get there to work on stuff, you know. Um, and, you know, one person, one job, then if that person was not able to keep up with it, nothing happened, you know. And, yeah, you're right, people got old for the physical labor. So we're still... There's still the issue of trying to get younger, more able-bodied people as members of the Garden Club, but and that 
that whole approach, well, we attack things as a group rather than you have to take care of one thing, that may help that because then people know they can they can put in an hour here, or two hours there, and, and they've, they've done something that's appreciated. I think we should try and get Daigle, have a meeting with Daigle, whether it's one of our meetings or just come in and talk to him. Okay. And then tell him, because you know, those numbers that we came up with last year were they might be the same numbers again, or he might say we can do this. Okay. Well, anyway, getting back to data with, you know, some of the like pocket park mm -hmm. stuff, which is cl more closely related to what the Garden Club is contributing. Um, yeah, he found out what saw, uh, actually observed what we were doing with the the medians, and then came to well, sent a message to me through Julie saying. I know you guys are using mulch and compost. I just bought six yards of each. They're out back, free to, free for you guys to use wherever you want. Great. Just on his own, you know. Nobody asked him to do that. He just did it. And he and I have since had discussions about how to to rebuild the medians for more appropriate gardens. And you know, the thing around the sign out front. There's going to be a planter out there. And, Geez, when we started talking about that, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, what's the cheapest timbers that we can buy? Do we want pressure treated? And he says, oh, we can just get granite blocks. And I was like, what? He says, oh, yeah, yeah, we use them all the time. So maybe we'll communicate and then see when we can yeah. meet with him and Irene. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's some idea of the projects. I mean, I've, yeah, those projects were fine. I mean, if we're doing that, you know, unless we're doing something like uh, getting I have some, some boardwalk for the uh, town forest or something that wouldn't be on there, I don't think. Maybe it is. But uh, we, we can just talk to him and get his idea. And then I, what happened last year, things just magically flowed into a budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We didn't have to worry again. Uh, yeah. Well, we, we can meet at another time. There's another some date, wizard maybe of Oz behind the curtain. Yeah. Something. I mean, I was surprised. I mean, I, because, you know, we were sitting here every, every meeting with Higgins, just essentially saying we had to go to war to get our budget approved and we can only ask for this much and don't do that and be careful. Yeah, and then yeah. Just okay. it didn't it might have happened if we'd gone on the budget committee. Mm. There's some there's some, <laughs> some, some tough fiscal heads on that committee. Sorry if this caused such a huge uh, left turn. <laughs>